Okay, so, Malort Negroni. I have no idea what to expect from this. Um, apprehensive is not the right word. Scared is the right word. Um, I like Negroni. A Negroni is a good, a good drink. This is not Negroni coloured, but I mean, we'll, we'll be getting to that. Doesn't smell aggressive. It doesn't smell like it's going to try and punch me, so that's something. It's just kind of coming out quite flat. I'm putting this off. You can tell. All right, just let's let's drink it. Oh oh. The gin and the vermouth have have tamed the dragon quite significantly. It's still. Still fighting for attention though. The rest of the drink has now gone away in that um ha -la -la. aggressive bitterness that Malort has is front and centre. Um I'd almost say that this is like a leveled up Negroni for people that like the bitterness of Negroni and kind of want a bit more pain in their life. I think that's first sip it's beautiful you get wonderful like it's kind of like marshmallow qualities from the Hendrix gin um, the vermouth plays really nicely a little bit of sweetness in there and then that weird petrally aggressive bitterness just sticks with you but it is mellowed because I mean I'm not choking so that's an improvement it's just kind of like this yeah I'm here and I'm here to stay kind of a a bitterness. So actually, that works. Just. Just works. So I should probably now tell you how I made this drink. So first of all, I collected a crystal rocks glass, uh, and to that I added a sphere of ice, because a couple of Christmas ago somebody was kind enough to buy me a couple of spherical ice moulds, so I thought I'd put them to good use today. To that I added 20 millilitres of Malort, We'll get into measurements in a second. Uh, on top of that, I then had some Carpano Antica Vermouth, which I added, and then, the gin of choice, I went with Hendrix Luna. Again, all 20 mil. Uh, because I don't have a bar spoon at home, I used a table knife. If you're making this at home and you don't have one, I encourage you to use whatever you have available that is comfortable. This wasn't the easiest stirring experience, but it did the job. And Negronis, you're supposed to garnish them with an orange rind. I didn't, for two reasons. One, I don't have an orange in the house. And two, I didn't want to buy an orange just to take a bit of peel off for this video. Um, I mean, I could have eaten the orange, I suppose. That would have been a solution. I didn't think of that for some reason. But anyway, this is, this is served naked. I don't think it loses anything from not having a bit of orange peel put on top of it. But if you... Do a lot of cocktails and you love your garnishes, go right ahead. I ain't going to stop you, I just haven't done it myself. So why why 20 mil? Well, the original Negroni recipe is supposed to be all equal parts. Now then, that varies depending on what your legal measure is in bars. So if I were doing it here in the UK, I'd have to do 25 mil of each. So you'd end up with a drink of 75 mil in total. And that's a fair bit of liquor. Uh, if you're in the US, I believe it's an ounce, but the general idea is it's a ratio rather than a set measure. So if you want a bit of a smaller drink, 20 mil will do fine. I did 20 mil equal split. Some people, because they don't like the bitterness in a Negroni, sometimes they'll pull back on the bitter and increase on the sweet vermouth, and that makes a more kind of like a an easier drinking experience if you're more of a fan of sweet as opposed to bitter, or if you really like the bitter, you can go the opposite way around. So what makes this different from a normal Negroni? Now, it doesn't look like a normal Negroni, uh, and that's because there's no Campari in it. That's what the Malort is sort of stepping in for. And a lot of you are probably saying, oh, it's not a Negroni if it doesn't have Campari, and that's correct and also kind of not. Uh, Negronis came about because this guy called Count Negroni went into a bar once and ordered an Americano, the drink, not the coffee. Uh, and an Americano is Campari, sweet vermouth, and soda. And so the tale goes, rather than soda, he wanted gin in his because he was hardcore. And it was really popular and it caught on. Um, there's, there's people for and people against that tale. It's 
regarded to be a little bit apocryphal, but whatever, it's a nice story, if nothing else. Um, and you got a cool drink out of it at the end of the day. Um, I have done versions in the past of Negroni's where I've taken out the Campari and used Aperol. That's really nice if you prefer something that's a bit more citrus forward. Um, and there are other ones that use like things like Chinar and stuff. So it's not like I'm reinventing the wheel completely. This is not anything that nobody else has done already. It's just I thought it would be fun to try if Malort works in place of Campari. Now what we lose is that beautiful red colour. But beyond that, it's a fascinating drink and I would imagine Somebody in Chicago must do this already, but I'm not in Chicago, so I don't know what the bars are doing there. So I thought, I've got all the bits and pieces, why the hell not? And it, get, it gives us an opportunity to try a Negroni. Now, I should quickly talk about why I picked the other ingredients in this drink. Whoa! Let's start vermouth. This is my favourite vermouth. It's a lot of people's favourite vermouth. Um, a lot of people would probably argue it's not even really a vermouth. There's a row going on with that, and I'm not going to get into it. I like this stuff. It's I, I use it in so many things. I use it in cooking. Kind of an expensive vermouth to use in cooking, but actually does some really fucking great things to food, so I use it for that as well. Um, this is my second bottle in six weeks. I want to quickly point out the first one wasn't this big. That's ridiculous. Actually, it's not that ridiculous, because this stuff is genuinely fucking brilliant. Um, it's used in cocktails around the world. Um, and it's kind of like the next step in your sweet vermouth game. I, I don't know how to describe it because vermouth is a bit of a weird one in that it is kind of like a melding pot of so many wonderful flavours. Um, I would encourage anyone who wants to give a sweet of vermouth a go, give this a go with like some sparkling water and like some olives or nibbles and stuff and you will have a fantastic afternoon. It's a great little snacking beverage. Um, in parts of the world where they have their shit together a bit more and an afternoon drink does not mean you're having a hard time. It just means you're enjoying life. For the gin, I had a lot of choices. I've got a lot of gin in this house and I nearly went with the Just, the Swedish dill gin that we covered a few weeks ago. I thought about using an old Tom, but I thought mm, the sweetness would probably bury the bitterness a bit too much and that's sweet and sweet plus the bitter. I, I don't know, I kind of wanted to not completely drown out the Malorts, at least deliberately. Having tried this, I still think an old Tom might have been too much. But, again, if you wanted to, you could give it a go. Um, I'm tempted to see what a coconut old Tom would do, because that, that stuff's good. I need to cover that at some point. What I ultimately decided to do was revisit an old friend from Hendrix, and it's not the original. Um, this is one of the more recent, I can't say the most recent special edition, because there's another one came out called Amazonia, which I can't get my hands on. Uh, this is the Lunar Gym. And mixed reviews, I think it's safe to say. I love this stuff. I think it's got a wonderful confectionery marshmallowiness to it that the original Hendrix and a lot of the later ones don't have. It's a really different take on the recipe. Uh, and I'm really glad it is, because with Hendrix's success, they probably could just basically do the same distillation, put in a, well, like one or two new ingredients and call it a day, have a nice label on it, and people would buy it. They've not done that. They've gone with something that's clearly very different, and I think that really works. Because it's got that kind of, like, sweet flavour, rather than, like, being overtly, like, additionally sweetened. Um, I thought it was like a good halfway house between a London Dry style and an Old Tom, and I wanted to try in this, and it shines through. It doesn't, it doesn't o take over, but it can also stand up to the Malort, which again was something I was worried about. If you don't have this, a good London Dry will set you up. Um, do you know what, I think, um, would Bombay work in this? I think Bombay might be a bit too citrusy, actually. Maybe something like a beef eater, that would be quite good. Um, or Mermaid, that would be interesting because the hops would play against the Malort if you have Mermaid available. But I mean, Negroni is what you make of them, so experiment. Do you know, it's actually kind of Moorish. The bitterness is, it's, again, it's still a pretty aggressive bitterness, but it's not overbearing like it is just taking a shot of that. Which Brings me to the comments. Uh, let me know down below. Are you from Chicago? Have you tried Malort in cocktails? Do you know somebody that likes experimenting with this stuff in unusual ways? Have you had a Malort Negroni yourself? 
Let me know all these things and more down below. Thumb this video if it was informative or unusual answered a question for you. I don't think many people were asking this question, but I mean, if you were, you're welcome. Um, and if you feel like supporting the channel, there's links down to my Patreon, or you can hit the join button on the channel as well. For now though, thank you very much for watching, and do join me next time, where I'll be drinking something else. I nearly said, I hope you have a great day, because I think I'm James Hoffman apparently now.